so to get a clear idea let me take some example see um, i have constructed some turing machine with uh, maybe three states yes okay let me name uh, q2 as some accepting state because a turing machine without any accepting state is not a valid turing machine at all right and uh, let the 0 1 be the 0 1 and blank be the tape symbol okay and let this be the scenario I have 0 1 and blank okay and we have blank on the other, uh, remaining cells of the turing machine okay and q0 will be currently pointing here so i have written a rule something like this q0 upon 0 0 will be remain as it is go to the right and change the state to q1 okay and q1 upon 1 there is a rule assume that there is a rule 1 will remain as it is come to the left and go to q0 okay and if, if q1 encounters blank then mm, blank will remain as it is go to the right or left doesn't matter uh, go to some accepting state okay now what do we have so this is the turing machine what we have in a in represented in a table okay and this is the input symbol that has been uh, or this is the tape symbol current scenario q0 upon 0 what will happen q0 upon 0 as per the rule 0 will remain as it is go to the turing machine will change the state to q1 and it will go to the right okay right okay now q1 is encountering 1 now q1 upon 1 what rule we have 1 will remain as it is come to the left and change the state to q0 okay so now q0 again is facing 0 right so what will happen the in in such kind of scenario the turing machine never halts right it loops around uh, these two symbols so q0 upon 0 it will go to right and q1 upon 1 it will come to the left so this is a turing machine example of a turing machine that never halts at all so it is uh, not deciding whether the input string belongs to the language or not because it it never halts in any particular state so this is a this is the example of uh, uh, some of the turing machine what is mentioned in point 2 some inputs it does not halt at all right so such kind of uh, turing machine machines are undecidable okay yes yeah now let us look into some of the definitions very important definition with respect to decidability the first definition is if the language L, if it belongs to yeah, sigma star, that is, um, the language is made up of any combinations of the input string, it is recursively enumerable. Okay, the term recursively enumerable if there exists a Turing machine M such that L uh, is equal to TM. Okay, so what does this mean? This means this is a very simple definition actually. This means if there is a language and if the input string which is valid as per the definition of the language if it is fed to a turing machine m and for a valid uh, string if the turing machine so let us let me write this input as valid okay so for the valid input if the machine always says yes okay so that it concludes that it it is a, a valid input then this turing machine is recursively enumerable okay enumerable okay now there is a question what about invalid string what if i give in invalid input to the machine so invalid input we don't have any uh, definition here right so what can happen with respect to invalid input so there is a possibility that it may say uh, the string is accepted or it there is a possibility that it may say the string is uh, rejected or there is a possibility that the turing machine may not halt at all right and such kind of a machine is called as recursively enumerable which focuses on only the valid input uh, based on the definition of the language so this kind of uh, language is called as recursively enumerable okay now what about definition 2 so now we are speaking about a recursive language so language is recursive if there exists a turing machine m that satisfies the following two conditions let us see what are the two conditions are the first one if w belongs to l then m accepts w okay that is it it holds in some accepting states and if do, m w uh, does not okay so if w does not belong to l that is for invalid string then m eventually holds okay where does it hold it holds in some non accepting state so we have a turing machine something like this m okay and all on input 
if the Turing machine, if it is able to say yes for all the valid string and no for all the invalid string, then such kind of a Turing machine is called a, a recursive Turing machine. Uh, we should be you should know the very difference between the recursively enumerable and recursive. Recursive is the one that Turing machine ho always holds. Uh, if the in irrespective of whether the input fed is valid or invalid, okay. And then comes, yeah, a problem with. Uh, let us look into the definition three. A problem with the two answers, yes or no, is uh, decidable if the corresponding language is recursive. That's what I meant. And in this case, the language is also is called as it is also the recursive language is also called as decidable language. Okay. And what is uh, undecidable language? Uh, it is very simple. If a problem if a problem or a language is undecidable, then it is not decidable. Okay. So if it is not decidable, then obviously it is undecidable. So this is about the uh, some of the important definitions. Uh, with respect to de decidability, the mainly the definition of recursively enumerable languages and a recursive language. Now let us consider some example uh, with respect to decidable language. Okay, and the definition one, the, this is the first example, and uh, here the language ADFA. So the language defined is ADFA. Normally uh, we have seen the language defined as L, right? But uh, this is another way of representing the language it is na named as ADFA and it consists of BW let us see what exactly B and W is uh, B accepts the input string W so B here is a DFA okay so this is the language definition the DFA B accepts the input string W so if this is the DFA and if input is W is given it should be able to accept it okay and the theorem with respect to uh, this definition is that the language ADFA is decidable so we have already seen what exactly a decidable language is uh, if if the Turing machine associated with this language if it holds on all input then the language is decidable okay so to prove as a proof we have to prove the theorem and we have to construct a Turing machine that always halts and also accepts ADFA. Okay, so it will accept all the valid uh, uh, strings of ADFA. And when I say it always halts, it should it should be a decidable that uh, uh, the valid string of this language should be uh, end up in uh, some accepting state of the Turing machine and invalid uh, string should accept should be should end up in some non accepting states of the turing machine that we are going to design okay yes so we are going to design a turing machine and we are going to uh, pass this b comma w as input and the turing machine should halt okay so in other words it should say yes or no yes or no as per the uh, definition of the language okay okay so the the we define the turing machine m as follows and uh, let b be the dfa yes which you have already spoken about and w an input string to that dfa okay so uh, b comma w is an input for the turing machine m okay so this uh, is the the combination of the dfa and the input string will be the total input for the Turing machine. Okay. Okay. Now, how can I uh, represent this DFA, which is actually uh, normally represented in terms of a transition diagram and it has some associated tuples, right? So, what we have to do is this B, which is nothing but the DFA, has to be uh, which, which has uh, five tuples which has five tuples has to be converted or encoded the right word would be encoded into uh, a string that makes up the W okay that makes up the W suppose uh, W is made up of alphabet set from 
0 and 1 then this b the dfa b should be obviously the dfa b is having many tuples right we have already seen k sigma then delta uh, then we have q naught and a so these are the five tuples and this has to be encoded into a format or equivalent representation uh, of zeros and ones okay zeros and ones why zeros and ones because uh, the the string that it accepts as uh, input is made up of the alphabet set uh, which is made up of zero and one so if it was a and b then the encoded string should be in terms of a's and b's okay so th this is the encoded format of b so this b is the encoded uh, dfa the tuples are encoded in terms of uh, zeros and ones if uh, the alphabet symbol uh, is made up of zero and one or if if it was a and a's and b's then it should be encoded in terms of a's and b's and the input string itself w should be uh, passed as an input for the turing machinium okay so totally it is uh, represented as b comma w okay then we have to simulate this b and the input w in the turing machine m so if the simulation ends in some accepting accepting state of the b okay then w then then the turing machine m accepts w if it ends in some non accepting state of b then m rejects w okay so basically what the turing machine does is it uh, simulates the dfa okay and uh, of course the dfa will end up in an accepting state if a valid w string is given to it and the same happens here so if the dfa and a valid string w is uh, given as an input to the turing machine the turing machine will end up in some accepting state and if uh, the simulation where the dfa b and some invalid string invalid string so let me write this as invalid okay then the turing machine should should end up in some non accepting states okay so this is what the dfa would have done right so if if you had directly worked on a dfa if you pass a invalid string to a dfa it will end up in some non accepting state and if you pass a valid string to a dfa it will end up in some accepting state so what we have done is we have encoded this dfa as well as the input string and we have uh, simulated this in a turing machine and the turing machine works exactly like how the dfa would have worked right so using this uh, we can prove that the adfa is decidable adfa is decidable so this is this is how we can prove that uh, this particular theorem is true one more here and the definition two okay so this is the language here is acfg which is made up of a g and w and the definition of the language says context free grammar g accepts the input string w okay this is very similar to the problem what we have seen previously uh, the previous uh, language was associated with the dfa so obviously it was associated with the regular language and now we are talking about context free grammar so we now we are talking about context free language okay and the theorem what we have to prove is acfg is decidable okay so this is what is the theorem and we have to prove that this language acfg is decidable uh, the proof is again very similar to that of uh, the previous one let's see in detail how the proof how how we prove this theorem so first what we have to do is we have to convert uh, convert the context free grammar into uh, cnf the chomsky's normal form then any derivation of w string w of length k requires 2k minus 1 steps if the grammar is in cnf okay so this is the universal rule right if if the grammar is in chomsky's normal form and if the string w if it is valid 
in other words if the chomsky's no chomsky's normal form grammar if it is able to generate the string w then it will take 2k minus 1 steps in its derivation what is k k is nothing but the length of the string okay to get a better understanding let us uh, consider some example okay so this is the grammar what i'll write which which will be in some uh, chomsky's normal form so let me write this as okay st and t let me write it as a b s gives a or b a gives a and b gives b okay so this is uh, this is the grammar which is in chomsky's normal form right now i want to derive let me take a string as a b or a a b a b okay so there can be multiple way uh, multiple derivation for this string using this grammar like i, I can have a let uh, leftmost derivation i can have a rightmost derivation in the leftmost derivation also i can derive in multiple ways uh, or in the right way rightmost derivation also i can derive in multiple ways now let, let me take one derivation uh, which should be able to i mean uh, if the grammar if if this is a valid string as per the grammar then i should be able to de derive it in 2k minus 1 step what is k k is nothing but the length of the uh, string here the length of this string is 5 so i should be able to derive this in 2k minus 1 which will be 9 okay 9 steps let's see whether it is possible so I'll consider the grammar, SQs, ST, then, uh, so here I'll make use of rightmost derivation. Then T I'll expand, let me write it as AB, then B I will expand it as B, SQs, this will be replaced as small letter a then s again i will replace it with st this is what i have t again i will expand it as ab sqs mm, capital a small letter b sqs okay small letter a b a b and finally i can replace s with small letter a so a b a a b a b okay so this is the string what i am able to generate using the grammar now let me count the number of steps involved in this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 yes so if the grammar is valid then i should be able to generate in uh, it in 2k minus 1 steps which is in this case it is 9 okay yeah so that that's that's what i wanted to prove here with this particular point 2k minus 1 steps if the grammar is in cnn now what we have to do is we have to design a turing machine m we have to design a turing machine m that uh, holds as follows okay so the first step is let g be the uh, a context free grammar in cnf form and w an input string then we pass g comma w as an input to the turing machine m okay so this will be passed as an input g comma w yeah uh, see we we have already seen what exactly this or how i can pass this a context free grammar and an input string to the context free grammar as an total input to the Turing machine m. So what we have to do is this grammar is made up of again four tuples, right? V, sigma, uh, then a starting state S and the rule set, okay? Of course, in different textbook, you can find different uh, way of representing these four tuples. So what I have to do, I have to encode these four tuples in a term of sigma star. So in this case, if I had, I had to consider this particular grammar, then this entire grammar need to be represented in terms of A's and B's. Right? 
because the W is made up of A's and B's. A's and B's. Okay. So the entire uh, grammar is encoded in A's and B's and W is obviously a string uh, which is in terms of A's and B's. So this encoded and the input string W is passed as an input to the Turing machine M. Okay. And this Turing machine should halt. It should either say yes or no. So when it should say yes, let us see. So if the k is 0, if the value of k is 0, uh, which is not, what what is the condition if k is 0? Uh, it is nothing but a, a length of the string w is 0, right? Okay. If then we have a single step derivation. If k is not if k is not equal to 0 then we should list out all the derivation with the 2k minus 1 step okay so we should derive all the uh, or we should list out all the derivations with the 2k minus 1 steps and if any of the derivation in in the step 2 in the previous step if it generates the string w then m accepts the string uh, g comma w otherwise m rejects okay yeah so depends on the length of the string w that is k if k happens to be 0 then I have to list out a single then uh, I have a single step derivation right uh, and based on this single step derivation I have to the Turing machine should decide whether the string is accepted or not if it is not the case if it is not the case if k value is more than 0 then we have to list out all the derivation with the 2k minus 1 step and among this um, list which has a 2k minus 1 step if there is any one derivations that uh, that generates the string w then the turing machine m should accept the uh, input that is the context free grammar in chomsky's normal form encoded in terms of uh, a sigma star and a w it should be accepted otherwise m should reject this okay so um, this is as same as simulating the context free grammar in a turing machine so if the context free grammar is able to generate the string w uh, then the string is valid same way if the turing machine if it is able to obtain a string that is generated that is ge that is generated by using 2k minus 1 steps then the turing machine should end up in some accepting state if it is not possible to derive a valid string w in a 2k minus 1 step then the turing machine m should reject the string so this is exactly the simulation of the context free grammar okay so this uh, with this we can prove that uh, the uh, language ACF, ACFG is decidable okay because the Turing machine is able to decide um, whether the string is valid or not so string the Turing machine will, will always halt it will halt uh, in an accepting state if this if the string is valid and uh, it will halt in a non accepting state if the string is invalid now let us consider some example of undecidable languages so here uh, let let us take this example ATM okay so ATM is a language uh, which is made up of M and W and the definition says the Turing machine M okay this M accepts the string W okay and the theorem associated with this uh, language definition is ATM the language ATM is undecidable okay now we have to uh, prove this theorem that the language ATM is unde undecidable. For the proof, uh, we can we can prove that the ATM is recursively enumerable uh, by constructing a Turing machine U. Okay, so we need to create a new Turing machine which is named as U, and it will take input as M and W. So M is the uh, Turing machine what we have uh, sp spoken about in the definition of the ATM right and uh, w is the string that the turing machine m accepts so we are what we are doing is we are passing this as an input to a new turing machine u 
and uh, this Turing machine U will simulate uh, the input W on M. Okay, so yeah, that's what it will be able to simulate the Turing machine M on the string W. And if the M enters an accepting state, the Turing machine U should accept this string that is M M comma W. Okay, okay. So if M accepts W, then the Turing machine U will accept the string M comma W, and uh, hence we can say that ATM, that is the language associated with this uh, M and W, is uh, recursively enumerable. So why it is recursively enumerable and not recursive? Because uh, we don't know what happens if uh, M does not accept W. If this Turing machine M, if it does not accept W, uh, then we don't know what U does, right? So it will accept only if M accepts W and uh, there is no definition, uh, there is no clarity with respect to what happens if M does not accept W. So it, there is a possibility that uh, it may uh, accept uh, W or it may reject W or it may not halt at all, right? So we don't know that definition. So uh, we, ca we can say that U is recursively enumerable. Okay, now further we have to prove that the ATM is uh, undecidable uh, by contradiction. So, so with the uh, proof of contradiction, we are going to prove that ATM is undecidable. So what do you mean by contradiction? First we assume that it is decidable. Then with the proof, uh, with the concept of uh, contradiction, we are we are contradicting the assumption and proving that it is undecidable. Okay, let us see how that can be done. So first we assume that ATM is decidable and we have to design a new Turing machine H that events that eventually holds on all the inputs. Okay, so I have to design this new Turing machine which is named as H. Okay, and it will halt on all the uh, possible inputs. Okay, and what is given as input to H? It's same thing. M M comma W. So uh, how how will I pass a Turing machine M to W? Obviously, this has to be converted into some uh, um, encoded format that 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 um, that is same as W. Okay, uh, as same as same as what we have explained for the previous uh, theorem. Okay, so this will be encoded in some other format. And uh, these two, this encoded format of uh, the Turing machine M and the string W is passed as an input to a new Turing machine H. Okay, And this Turing machine should eventually halt on all input. That is, it should be able to say yes and no based on the input. Okay, So when we, it will say yes, it will uh, say yes or it will accept if uh, the Turing machine M accepts W. Okay, So then this H will say yes. Okay, if uh, this Turing machine M, what we are going to simulate in H, if it does not uh, accept W, then this Turing machine H will say no. Okay, so this is how uh, we are going to build a Turing machine H. Okay, so these two points. Okay, now uh, with this knowledge, what we are going to do is we are going to construct a new Turing machine D. Okay. So I am going to create a new Turing machine D and this uh, Turing machine D calls H as a subroutine, okay, subroutine. So based on the input that is given to D, it will call the subroutine H. Subroutine uh, H is nothing but again uh, another Turing machine. Subroutine in the sense it, it makes use of H, Turing machine H as a function, okay, it makes use of H as a function and um, yeah and this is what the D does okay there are three points see D is described as follows what is given as an input to D see the encoded format of M is fed as an input to D and using the sub subroutine this uh, the H the function the Turing machine H has to run the Turing the Turing machine M, okay, and the W, what it's supposed to run. See uh, the H, it makes use of M and W, right? 
but now what i am going to pass is m and w is nothing but the encoded format of m okay so i am simulating a turing machine m and the input what i am going to pass to m is the encoded format of m itself okay so that is what we are going to do and what uh, d does is so d is designed in such a way that is constructed in such a way that it rejects this string m that is nothing but the encoded format of the turing machine if h accepts this okay if h accepts m comma encoded m then d rejects it and d will accept this if h uh, d will accept this string uh, which is encoded turing machine okay encoded form of a turing machine if h rejects m comma encoded m okay so this will act in a, uh, a contradictory way to that of h okay yes if if h uh, accepts that then d rejects it okay and if d if h rejects uh, m comma encoded m then d will accept it okay so this is how the working of d okay so d works in this way okay so based on this yeah so we can we can uh, describe d in this way okay so if the encoded turing machine m is given as an input to d then it will accept if m does not accept m m in the sense the encoded m and it will reject if m accepts m okay this sounds very uh, confusing but this is see i'll make it very clear m is the turing machine and the uh, the, the m which is written in an angular bracket is nothing but the encoded form of itself okay which is given as an input to input string to m okay and d will accept if m does not accept m encoded m and it will uh, reject if m accepts the encoded m okay so this is how uh, d works okay now what we will do is now we will pass the encoded d to the turing machine d itself okay so what will happen if that is the case then d will accept if d does not accept the encoded version of itself and it will reject if uh, d accepts the encoded version of d okay so this means d accepts encoded d if d does not accept encoded d okay so which is nothing but a contradiction of course this this sounds very confusing confusing but you have to go through the steps okay so first uh, we have to understand what exactly uh, this h does and how d works d works in a opposite manner to that of a h and what we are feeding to d we are feeding uh, the turing machine m and the encoded version of turing machine as a string to d okay such that uh, d works in this way it will accept if uh, m does not accept the encoded m and it will reject if m accepts the encoded m okay now if i pass the encoded version of d to itself then uh, this 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 is what ha it happens right it will accept if d does not accept uh, encoded d and it will reject if d accepts the encoded d okay now this is purely a contradiction to itself isn't it now using this contradiction using this contradiction we can prove that atm is undecidable okay so this is uh, by using the a concept of contradiction we prove that the language atm is undecidable okay and the turing machine what we have here used here u is uh, it it is used to simulate another turing machine m right so we can we call such a turing machine as universal turing machine a turing machine that simulates another turing machine is called as a universal turing machine 